Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Micah Let's Play, and guess who I am? I'm Micah, because who else would I be? Once again, peering from beyond the veil, and I still haven't figured out how to really make that intro work, so we're gonna stop right there. How about that? Okay guys, first and foremost, holy bananas, we got some new information on Dragon Age the Veil Guard. Real talk. I was not ready, Christmas came early, and we're gonna look at this new gameplay footage. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a thing, guys. It, this is, this isn't a drill, people. This shit is happening. So we're gonna, we're gonna play this, we're gonna record, we're gonna watch it, I'm gonna react, and, uh, yeah, and then we'll do a wee bit of the discussion based on whatever the fuck we see. So, with that said, let's get started. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty. IGN first. Okay. What's up, oh. everybody? I'm Hi. Kat Bailey, and this is our extended look at Dragon Age The Veil Guard's gameplay. Mm. I'm here with Bioware lead developers Corinne Bush and John Epler. Corinne, <gasps> what are we looking at today? Oh, wow. Hey, all. So today, so we're going to be okay. helping out one of our companions, Davrin. Oh, this Daddy, is part of his personal go. arc to rescue the griffins long thought extinct. Oh, we're going to take a quick journey through the lighthouse, your base of operations. We're going to head into the crossroads and okay. make our way to the dark swamps of Hosberg wetlands. Oh, look at the So you're in the lighthouse of Primage. This is your base of operations that you inherited willingly or unwillingly from <gasps> Solus. Uh, it is located in the Fade. It's where Solus was able to start planning his rebellion against the Elven oh, Gods wow. millennia ago. Right now, you and your team have occupied it, started to build it, started to shape itself this around your personality. So beautiful. As Kryn mentioned, we are going to go talk to Davrin, which wow. is okay. located up above. And each of these spaces kind of shapes <clears throat> itself around your companions as you, as they live there, as they <clears throat> basically spend their, their wow. arcs in those rooms. And we I see here the, the glowing light above indicates Davern's ready for us. Let's oh, check in wonderful. with him. Oh, Okay. Oh, nice. Something wrong? We got a message. A place called the Cauldron was attacked. That's some sort of Grey Warden Tavern. Right? It's a secret Warden readout. No okay. idea what goes on there. And why are you involved? Right? Because whatever attacked, it sounds like the Gloom Howler. So, earlier Gloom in Daven's Howler? arc, you were introduced to his nemesis, the Gloom Howler, a creature that's been hunting and stalking wardens for quite some time. It's kidnapped a bunch of other griffins. War Davern has been trying to track it down. Now he's got a lead, so we're going to go find this and go t track okay. this thing down. Now, Davern, he prefers the direct approach. We're going to choose a tough response and see if we can get his approval. Then let's get rid of it. Right? Have the same thought. Oh, What's left of the warden is still <gasps> licking their wounds. So we handle this alone. Mm -hmm. Just go to the cauldron and get the griffins back. Nice. So cute. You have to promise to behave, boy. Listen to every word I say, stay mm -hmm. out of trouble, don't do anything dumb, and don't eat any. I think we get the point. <laughs> Lancet and Remy told me there's a word for the bond Lancet between a and griffin Remy. and wooden mm. moving as one. Mm. Turlum. Until Hassan and I have that, I'm supposed to keep him safe. I have to say that I find I the griffin it. adorable. Yes. And very importantly, I know this is a question on everyone's mind. Yes, you can pet Hassan. I'm well, super thank excited. Thank goodness we can. for that. And all right, what are we going to be doing next? He's up for this. All right. Oh, we're going to finish getting this information from Davern on the Gloom Howler, and we'll yeah. be off to Hosberg in the Crossroads. Between Warden and Griffin starts by having faith in each other. True. Maybe. I suppose you were born for this sort of fight, boy. Right. All talons and temper. Right. And a sharp tongue to remind you of it. Right. As long as he backs it up. <laughs> he will. So I assume that a song can be helpful during the gameplay. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. In fact, a lot of Davern's abilities revolve around calling a son oh. in the heat of battle. Oh, that's his I room! I particularly love when you're going ah. against enemies. You see a son swoop down, especially Just if it triggers a combo this. between your companions. Right? As Quinn mentioned earlier, one of the interesting, the fun things we've done is if you see the lights on in a room, right. companions have something to say. You can see Harding up in that space there. Okay. Uh, Nev behind you as well, and Bellara. But okay. we have a mission ahead of us. We're going to go find the Gloom Howler if we can. Right. And we're going to go through the crossroads in order to do that. And the crossroads 
if you've played previous Dragon Age hair. games, uh, Trespasser in particular, yeah. is a location in the, the Fade that contains a number of Alluvians, allowing you to travel across Thetis in a matter of minutes. But I, at this point, the Crossroads are under assault by the other this. Elven gods. It's a dangerous place, and we are going to be in for a bit of a fight. Oh. And this Alluvian, the Vera Voss, is the central focus point of the lighthouse. This is going to take us to Solus's pocket area of the crossroads and it might really? look a little bit different from what you've seen in trespasser Can you okay tell us a little i see took nev and um, role that the crossroads plays and in the structure and the gameplay yeah. yeah so the crossroads is again it's the area that you spend a lot of time <gasps> oh, traveling through as you yes. go from area to area yes. it's also I'm a so space excited. that has <gasps> at one time served as solus's main base of operations and training Wait, ground isn't that like Mathal's tree or something so as you go through it you're going to find fragments of the past the things that Wait, solus had done previously that are going to give you a bit of insight into so solus as a character right? but also into the elven gods and their Girl motivations voices. Some of my oh, favorite content that you'll find if you go exploring in the crossroads mm -hmm. is these opportunities to actually oh, relive some of the memories Solus had during his rebellion. You actually get to take part in this ancient rebellion. What and here we have oh, the look. caretaker, a mysterious spirit that was actually here before Solus was and started to help Solus with his rebellion, but also to turn this into a safe haven for spirits. Right. Again, as I mentioned before, the gods are assaulting the crossroads, so yeah. it's no longer the safe haven it once was. Right. But you're going to work with this caretaker through quite a, a large amount of uh, ancillary content to rebuild yeah. this into that safe home for these creatures that if anyone knows Solus, he has a tremendous amount of affection for spirits. He does. But I like All the right. clothes. I like now the we're armor. we're gonna get into combat here. Oh, here and we go. This time we're playing as a mage. Yeah. <gasps> Faith. Yeah, mage yes. is one of my favorite classes to play. It's primarily mm. a ranged attacker, and when we're surrounded by swarming dark spawn, nice. I really have to use a variety of strategies to control the battlefield. Kill it with fire. Dark I'm gonna use my heavy Ooh, charged nice. attacks to knock down these ghouls, get them out of the way, and of course, dark spawn mm. are vulnerable to fire. Of so course. we made sure to equip our fire staff, have our fire abilities on hand. You may notice something about the dark spawn too, mm. that they look a little bit different than they have previously. They have. And part of that is because Gillanane, who has been always been Knew focused it. on using the blight as essentially a, a crafting <gasps> oh. material way to alter life itself, has been enhancing and changing nice. the dark spawn as part of Oh, that's her the bubble, army. that's your shield. Okay. Corinne, I noticed that you were doing a combo opportunity. Can you tell us a little bit more about how the role that plays in the in the actual combat? Yes. Mm. So the combat system in this game, the deep strategy behind it is mm -hmm. really to manage the various abilities your companions and rook have in concert. So in this case, Harding has a combo opportunity with Shred. It's gonna apply the Sundered the sunder effect and okay. deal a high amount of stagger. Gotcha. Now you'll notice I can combo that with Rook's ability Spirit Bomb. That's gonna cause a detonation combo. Oh, that's so, so cool. Again, one of the things you'll notice about the train here is it's very snowy. Very oh, mountainous. I'm so happy the to see me. is a realm that reflects Mer the waking Warrior world. Warrior was cool, In but this, this is an amalgamation this is of the all shit. the real world spaces that are tied to it. In the case, we've got Hosper, we've got other mountainous regions. So it's kind of this mix of the swamp. Do and as you'll see, really as do. we move towards these alluvians, the architecture around them very clearly reflects what's on the other side. We're not going to spoil and tell you exactly what's mm, on the other side, but right. you maybe make a few guesses based on what you're seeing. Yeah. Do I have to do the crossroads or can I just fast travel right through? So it depends how you progress through the game. Right. Uh, the first time you go to any of the new regions in the world, you'll traverse the crossroads to get there. That's fair. Subsequent times, we of course support fast travel. Okay. But it behooves you to actually go back and explore the crossroads as some of the deepest secrets Great. lie within. Hold. So okay. now you're in Hosberg Wetland. It's an area oh. that has been almost completely consumed by the Blight. Yeah. The Grey Wardens have set up an outpost here. Again, if you know anything about the Grey Wardens, they fight the Blight anywhere they see it. And they're mm. noticing something strange is going on here. The Blight is not oh, behaving okay. as they expect and do and has, as it historically has. So they've set really? up a shop in this uh, place called Lavendel. And you are here to work with them, help them out, and f help them find an answer to the questions about the blight that they're right. asking. 
tell me a little bit oh, more about this area. Oh, the little girl from the trailer. It looks a little bit like a, a hub where you can get a lot of quests and things like that. That's right. So here we find one of the bases of the Grey Wardens. Mm -hmm. So you'll see they've really built up a small fighting force here to hold off the dark spawn. What's more, the Grey Wardens are a faction we're going to be working with throughout the game. Right. We've got Holden, one of the Grey Warden Quartermasters. Okay. We're actually going to upgrade his shop and see what items he has in store for us, see if maybe oh. it gives us an edge in combat. And the Grey Wardens, much like the other factions, they understand oh, the stakes Griffin's of talent. the gods okay. being out. They want to help you, but you need to oh, help them first. They have, again, okay. as Kryn mentioned, they're holding off the, the dark spine here. They have other priorities, so getting them more powerful allows them to more meaningfully mm -hmm. contribute to your fight against the Elven right? gods. So where are I... I'm here All right, for so this. we're heading out of the Grey Warden Fortress <laughs> into the small town of Lavendel. Okay. Now, this used to be a beautiful place full of life, flowers, and you can see what effect <gasps> the blight the has sky. had. But the residents are still here. They're trying right. to make the most of their lives. Yeah. And you can see there's plenty of opportunities to help them. In fact, we're going to quickly check in with Finn the Physician okay. and see what he has in store for us. Oh. So Flynn, again, one of the focuses of this game is characters, not causes. I've been busy with patients, but I'm short on medical supplies. Okay. My mentor, Oscar, he should have some. He has a cabin outside the village. If you're out there, tell him you saw Flynn and they could use his help. And Flynn is a <clears throat> warden who you will do quests with. We mm. wanted to make sure that the side content of Dragon Age of the Veil Guard felt oh, as meaningful look at the water. and tied to the overall conflict of the game as anything else you do. We don't want to you to right. just go off and do random tasks. Everything needs to feel meaningful, either contributing to your fight against the gods or contributing to the growth of your companions and your the factions that you need at your side to stop the gods. You look a bit worried. Right? We're not sure where some of our wardens are, Beckett and a few others. We're supposed to check in. Right. We need to look out for each other more like than ever. I like the armor. It's just, I know they took Weiss helped hard and I hope they're okay. <gasps> One, the hair. All two, right. So they picked out. up they a couple of hard. quests in Lavendel, okay. but we're Means here they to lost their fortress. So we're going to make our way through the perils of Hosberg and try to get to oh. this warden fortress of the Cauldron. Right. Seeing a lot oh. of kind of organic I, I really matter. like the I mage combat. That's the blight. Absolutely. So I'm the blight so at this point, as mentioned this. before, the wardens understand it's changed. It's become a lot more organic, a lot more alive. You're back right. in Dragon Age 2, Inquisition, Origins. The blight, while it was oh, look, a, there's a chest slow up there. moving wall, right. it didn't have this almost sentience, this almost thought behind it. And That's obviously, Dillinane, we talked dude. about how the gods that are out are blighted. That probably has something to do with it. And it's made this area far more dangerous than it would have been before. Oh, look and at you the might creatures. Notice as we get into combat with some of these dark spawn, that they do Ooh. look a little bit different than before. And oh, that's they very, look very intentional. Gilanane, the god of monsters, she uses <gasps> they blight call her the like god a of medium monsters. to sculpt and warp the dark spawn to do right? her bidding to suit her purposes. Oh, so nice! Right now, you'll see a couple of herlocks. Uh, one with some pretty disgusting gross on its back. Right. Again, the idea that the dark spawn. And I the like blight that. Is an I like weapon. what they're, they're doing not just here. Coming out and that's actually know, really cool. Making swords, making armor. They're using the blight to augment themselves so they can more effectively defeat you and also give the gods the world that they desire. Yeah. All right, now I'm actually going to switch to my orb and dagger on the mage. Oh, yes, and yes, those yes. of you that were fans of the Night Enchanter in Dragon uh -huh. Age Inquisition. <gasps> You might feel right oh. at home with this. This is a more melee focused, more right? agile version of the mage. One of the main mechanics here I like is you the can magic. use this elemental orb oh. to apply stacks of elemental damage to the enemy oh. and then unleash nice. them with your dagger to detonate them. So again, we're I like in, how she told uh, you to move. You'll notice that there are blight pools. The dark spawn aren't just coming out of nowhere. Yeah. The blight is spawning them. Again, part of Gilanane's attempt to turn this into an army for the gods is to use these dark spawn, not just again, whereas you have the Venatori Ooh. and the Antom, 
one case representing magical power and the other case representing physical strength right. the dark spawn are representing overwhelming force yeah that was a pretty clutch heel a little that earlier, was by the way. <laughs> you know we've talked at length before that uh our fans have asked us where is the healing magic can you bring yeah. it back and uh nev in this game happy to oblige with a kit of healing spells right because yeah because so she's one of the out interesting of healing things that potions. i love about our companions is each of them their abilities the way that they're built they're very thematically appropriate to the character they're very i like the orb and dagger making sure that the gameplay and the narrative are as closely aligned as possible yeah. in the case of nev versus vlar versus uh Amric, our mages each right. of them has a healing ability that is thematically appropriate to them it makes sense when you know them as a character right watching you play i'm struck by sort of the size and the scope of right. this particular area it seems like there's a lot of exploration that i can be doing right here right that was really one of our goals with these areas of course we are a mission-based game but we really emphasize player autonomy you can revisit these spaces right. they're full of secrets puzzles revisit. some pretty incredible bosses and treasure and of uh -huh. course, as we saw earlier oh, look, in Lavender, some really narratively rich side quests. Oh, that's so cool. One thing that's interesting is you'll find we're going on a quest for Davern, but Davern is not currently in our party. Yeah. That's because Davern has gone ahead of us and is waiting for us at the Cauldron. This is, again, we want the followers, the companions to feel like they have autonomy. Right. And while they won't complete the quest on their own, they will go ahead and get things ready. So. When you get there, mm. you can have a, you talk to them, you have a conversation with them, and it feels like they are as invested in the success of their journey, their stories, as gotcha. you are. This looks like a, a pretty contiguous zone, is that right? Yeah. It is, yes. Yeah, so it's full of branching paths, different areas to explore, and what I love is the more content you do in the area, the more shortcuts you're going to discover. Right. Uh, you're really going to have a lot more flexibility I love in how the you navigate combat. between your remaining it missions and It looks so quests. good. When I think something the really Orban interesting Dagger? too the way that our yes. team has built these spaces is oh, there's nice. really, each space has its own story to tell. And while those quests, you know, we talked earlier about those quests and side quests being narratively, narratively, narratively relevant, they mm -hmm. also contribute to a more of a meta narrative meta story about yeah. the space itself. So in the case of Hosburgh, we talked about how this is an area surrounded by blight, and you're kind of getting to the center of what exactly is going on in Hosburgh and Lavendel, and these quests that you do, and the content Corinne is currently engaged in, helps to tell that story. Oh, he's almost completely... Oh! Nice! All right. We can see our companions are up here attacking this uh, dark spawn on their own. Let's yeah. give them a quick hand. Oh, nice. Oh, right. she didn't and do I the takedown. I love positional gameplay, making use of the environment to your advantage. And I just saw that nice. you could do a takedown move, so it's kind of a, a finishing move. You can, you can. Now, in this particular build, I'm really focused on using necromatic energies to siphon life force. Right. But if I, for instance, wanted to go the stagger route, I could go a full takedown build if I like. Uh, it's a really... Uh, powerful, heavy hitting style of gameplay. Oh, look, there's All daddy, right. there's our so husband. <laughs> you'll notice Davern is waiting for us. So let's right? see what he has to say. Oh, I like his armor. The sun flies in. Oh, look at his cape, it looks like yeah. wings. A bad day at the cauldron. Mm hmm What could do that? What have they been hiding inside? So something tore through the gate, that's probably not great. Looks right? like we should probably get moving. We won't find out standing around here. Right? Be ready for anything. I like it. A song looks so cute. So because we don't have Davin in our party, he's gonna right. move ahead and wait for us while we bring Nev and Harding along to clear a way, clear a path for ourselves to find Davin and get to where he is. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how Nev and Harding uh, sort of synergized during the combat? Yeah, so Nev and Harding, uh, Nev is a mage. Harding is a dwarf rogue, with magic. <laughs> each of the classes, and you can build and party entirely of one class if you want, but oh. the idea is that the classes synergize and they can set up nice. and detonate each other's abilities in a very 
interestingly. Now, oh because God, you have a lot so of freedom good. in how you build your character, Oop. you can, again, as said, you can Chow. have a, a, all rogue party, <laughs> all mage party, all warrior party, it still works. Nice. But in this case, uh, Nav and Harding oh. are very effective at setting up and deadening, in this case, as Corinne's going to show. Mm. So we're in danger here, and this is really <laughs> what I love about the tactical layer of combat. If you're okay. in that clutch situation where you've got this devastating incoming attack, Mm -hmm. Great time to pause gameplay, weigh your options, and in this right. case, I'm going to go back to our combo here and uh, see if I can just quickly get out of the way. <laughs> right. On to you. On to you. Okay. All right. So that's Harding talking. Oh, so they did a detonation. And you can see I've applied siphoning to these enemies, so I'm actually going to be leeching their health when I use my mage beam. Oh, nice. Now you'll notice there's blight boils throughout the area, and that's part of our philosophy on the combat encounters. If I don't destroy these blight boils, uh -huh. ghouls are going to continue Ugh. to emerge. So I'm really focused on oh, what Harding. targets do I take down first. Right. This enemy is a little bit weaker. I think I'm going to have my companions focus on them while I deal with this grenadier that's given me some <laughs> problem. Ooh. The combat looks... Yeah, I, responsive. I will say, it looks no, I'm tight. Say, Krin is much it more looks much good. better in this game than I am in this <laughs> You say that? Well, <laughs> most of the time, yes, 100%. Uh, but uh, each enemy, again, really leaning into the organic. The, what I love about the Grenadiers is they basically rip off pieces of themselves oh, and throw damn. them at you, which explode as blight. And again, really leaning to the idea that the blight is organic and disgusting. Mm hmm. One thing that I'm noticing is that the uh, the combat encounters can get pretty intense. You yeah. end up fighting a lot of different enemies. You can absolutely die if you're not careful. Right. Yes, and this, uh, as we mentioned earlier, this is uh, well into the game. So combat counters have really ramped up. Right. And it really shows the importance of positioning, using your companions wisely, Ooh. and oh. looking for those synergies and combos. <gasps> oh, no! Now, this is interesting. We just went down. <laughs> We've built our companions to be Revive. able to come okay. to our aid. So we're actually going to use a revive here. Yeah. And Nev to the rescue. Oh, that is And as Karen mentioned, this is later in the game. And Hosberg itself is a what I would consider a later game area. Uh -huh. um, and the encounter is a little bit more challenging. It's a more dangerous space. This shows up in the encounter, uh, but it also shows up in the so... visuals, the storytelling here. This is a place that you don't oh, want to be. You don't want to be in Hosberg. It is full of dark spawn, right. full of blight, and generally not a pleasant place to be. Right. Well, we'll be able to explore more of the cauldron when Dragon Age the Veil Guard comes out on October 31st. Oh. In the meantime, we are going to be continuing on with our IGN first coverage of Dragon Age for the rest of September. Oh, do And for everything that's great about games <gasps> and RPGs, it's over. keep it locked on IGN. Okay, okay. Well, let me stop this. Oh, my glob. Um... Oh my god, like, I, I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't talking that much, I was just really excited by everything I was saying, I was drinking everything in with my eyeballs, um, I really like the mage combat, I know I like the warrior combat, but after seeing this, and like the orb and dagger, like the mage was throwing magic with their hands, like, I'm sorry. The mage is just, it's the best. It, it might be squishier, but it's the best class. Um, I liked everything I saw. I heard what they were saying about the dark spawn and Gillinane. Davern looked fucking beautiful. Like, I love that Nev can revive, she can revive you. Um, God, there's just so much. Like, there's literally so much. Uh, that was being shown. It's like you would have to like slowly frame by frame look at everything. Um, when I do a more in-depth breakdown of the other trailer that we got, the other um, uh, trailer that talked about the release date and some other stuff, I'm going to combine all these things together, this and that and I'll come up with my theories because this changes everything I was thinking about. Um, and then also, 
um, I did a video recently talking about Davrin on the Angel Arts channel, and his channel link and the video will be in the video description. My, myself and my good friend Hark, we had a great time talking about Davrin, and it's just so funny because they were focusing on him. I really hope that they give Davrin some love and attention. Um, I know a lot of people like Lucanus more, but Davrin and Neve are mine, so I want some more Neve stuff. I want some more um, stuff about the other companions. Like, I want to know about everybody, but because they were showing my two faves, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. But, oh my god, I... I really like that. Only the only thing I'll say, the only nitpick is the way the canari look, like the way they designed the canari. It's not terrible. It just doesn't look like Inquisition's canari or the canaris from DA2. Um, so hopefully there are ways where you can kind of like I know they made that canari look attractive. He was a good looking canari. But I'm wondering if you can do more with the canaris than what we're seeing. Um I don't know. I loved it. I loved everything I saw. But what do you guys think? Um, I like how they talked about Gillanane and how she's been using the blight to kind of create the new dark spawn. Um, and it seems like these dark spawn, remember, they have like red tips. So it's something to do with the, the blighted lyrium. Like there's so much to like look into and pick at. The fact that we were in um, a new area. And I like how the aesthetic of the world still looks very reminiscent to Inquisition and I know a lot of people say they like the way Inquisition looked more but I like how it still has that vibe of Inquisition's world in this game and it just looks incredible like oh I'm so ready October can't get here fast enough Ah. Oh. What do you guys think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What do you think of the mage combat? What did you think of what the devs were saying? Um, yeah, I want to know. I want to know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. But if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You know what to do in those comment sections. And we will talk more soon. Remember to live, think, and dream big. Choose love over fear. And if you do, a son will love you too. But until then, bye. <laughs>